today we have our uh, session about the role of vaccination to control COVID-19. But uh, let me introduce myself. My name is Dr. Seda Saraf Akbar, and I am uh, infection control manager and microbiologist and Hashmani's group of hospitals. And um, as we are talking, as we are our um, very senior speak speakers today to discuss about COVID-19 and the role of vaccination to, to control COVID-19. But first of all, First of all, we will discuss COVID-19 discuss COVID-19. COVID-19 is, uh, is a pandemic, is a global crisis, which is testing health, which is the whole world in the world. And if we know COVID-19, we will know how to do it and how to do it in which way it is spread in which way it is spread in which way it is spread in which और हमें इसमें जो है कौन-कौन से ऐसे साइन एंड सिम्टम्स हैं जिनको देखते हुए हम पेशेंट्स को जो है डायग्नोस कर रहे होते हैं हम उनको जो है फर्दर उसके लिए भेज रहे होते हैं कि जिसमें आपके पास फीवर है कफ कफ है इस तरह के जो है अगर साइन एंड सिम्टम्स आपके पास हैं तो मे बी जो है पेशेंट ऑफ कोविड-19 लेकिन आजकल हम एक और चीज के ऊपर भी डिस्कस कर रहे हैं कि कोविड-19 की वैक्सीनेशन के हवाले से आजकल पूरी दुनिया में जो है कोविड-19 की जो है उसकी ट्रीटमेंट किस तरीके से करनी है उसको हमें जो है लोग लोगों को वैक्सीनेटेड किस तरीके से किससे करना है तो इसके बारे में लोगों के ज़हन में आजकल बहुत सारी ऐसी बातें हैं जिनके बारे में वो जानना चाहते हैं समझना चाहते हैं कि अगर हम ऑल ओवर द वर्ल्ड अगर हम कोविड-19 की वैक्सीनेशन को अगर हम इंट्रोड्यूस कर करवा रहे हैं तो कौन-कौन सी चीजों के बारे में हमें मालूम होना चाहिए तो इन्हीं सब बातों के के ऊपर आज हम जो है डिस्कशन करेंगे जिसमें हमारे पास बहुत ही ज्यादा हमारे पास एक थ्री रिस्पेक्टेड हमारे पास स्पीकर्स हैं जिसमें से हमारे पास सबसे पहले हमारे पास मौजूद हैं डॉक्टर मिनहाज अहमद किदवाई साहब हु इज एमबीबीएस एमपीएच एम एम एमबीए सीएमसी एंड हेल्थ मैनेजमेंट एंड पब्लिक हेल्थ कंसलटेंट एट यूनाइट कंसलटेंट तो लेट्स इनवाइट डॉक्टर मिनहाज Ahmed Kidwai to, to present his presentation. Thank you, Sadaf. Can I have the screen share, please? Sure, sir. So now you, you can share your screen with us. Is it shared? Not yet, sir. Is it shared now? Um, not, not yet, sir. Yes, sir. Is it shared now? Okay. Yes, sir. Um, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Today's topic basically is uh, regarding uh, coronavirus and the vaccine. Basically, coronavirus and vaccine, uh, we start with uh, COVID has uh, been a paradigm shift uh, for us. Uh, we are going into a straight line into our routine shores, but unfortunately, uh, we uh, came across with COVID and now we are into a paradigm shift that we have to move and see how we have to face this uh, problem. So uh, basically, uh, we are in a panic situation due to COVID and uh, it has affected everybody on a global basis. So this is a problem that uh, caused by COVID-19. So somebody can deal with the fixed mindset. Uh, we can have a growth uh, mindset 
or we have to innovation uh, in, into our mindset where we can innovate new, new things, how we can move forward and uh, face this challenge. So what are the issues in uh, managing uh, COVID? Uh, there are self issues that we have to deal with in terms of our family, our work, home office, emotions, burnout, fatigues, time, fitness. Then the system issues, there are health services to people, institution support, utilization resources and coordination. Then there are state issues that we have to deal with in terms of disease control, roles of uh, our uh, disaster management authorities, with health departments, resources, vaccines, provincial issues. So the state issues that needs to be dealt with. And then we have the issues to deal with society in terms of the SOPs, the behavior change, patients, families. So basically the issues that we are dealing with managing COVID are at the level of self, state, society, and the systems. And uh, we are forced towards to bring a change in our daily routine of life and deal with the COVID definitely is an issue with us. So the prescription uh, for the RS uh, therapy, as I'm proposing is we have to eventually face COVID. When we are dealing with the uh, uh, self-management in terms of COVID, uh, definitely we are fearful. Uh, future events appear real. This is what, how we describe fear and then or for quit everything and run or we can face and everything and regulate ourselves. So this is important for the self. Uh, we can allay anxiety, take adequate rest, be commitment, and also show, have some communication strategies to deal with the issue. Then feeling emotions, exercise, that's important for us uh, to ensure. Uh, changing behavior is very important. We have to be observant and optimistic in dealing with this issue. Uh, we have to value today. It's important that how we live today and how we value our life uh, in terms of dealing with COVID. Uh, we have to build our immunity uh, through the diet and other factors and be determined and ensure disinfection in our daily life. So basically, we have to manage ourselves to deal with the COVID situation. But the more important thing is that we have some behavioral issues that some people are skeptic uh, in dealing with the COVID. There's some people feel that is special and COVID will not affect them. People are unaware, they are warriors. There are people who are fearful, confused. Uh, then we don't know when the panic button which has to be pressed. Then there are decision delays in terms of dealing with COVID. So where are the decision delays uh, in terms of COVID? It's a level of pre-onset of COVID, onset, then again onset, and then the at level of complications. So the first is basically that we are not aware, there are no precautions, and then uh, do we go for precautions or not? That's another issue, that's the first delay. And then this is dangerous for society if we don't take uh, the precautions at our individual level. And then at the onset of COVID uh, systems, aware, are you aware of symptoms? And then the testing, availability, affordability, then the stigma of going for testing, getting diagnosed for the being a positive. So how people react with that? There's a second delay. And then if the test come positive, we have to isolate ourselves and then the family tracing also has to be done. Uh, in case of uh, the onset of COVID, we have to see that uh, the testing is uh, then again when they, uh, we are feeling free of disease, then for the complications, what to do, where to go. There's third delay and then the hospitalization and the recovery. And then when the complications do occur, we do visit the hospitals where we go for our hospital checkup. Then that's again, their delay, the complication may occur. And then there is issues if the death occurs where we uh, have to go for the uh, uh, body recovery in terms of the issues that we have. There are a lot, a lot of violence also that takes place in terms of our behavior when uh, we do not get the body and on in time because people are not aware of the procedures. And then uh, the burial is also another issue where we have to, have to follow some SOPs. So there are some uh, de delays in terms of decision making. So ultimately, all boils down to our behavior. 
And we have to ensure that uh, there has to be a way forward for our behavior change. And uh, that is basically in terms of uh, initial stage where we deny, we have to ensure that COVID is present. So then we think about how to change ourselves. There's a contemplation phase uh, where if we have to choose uh, in how to change ourselves, uh, uh, sometimes uh, we do have masks, but we keep the mask uh, in our pocket. And I usually ask people, where's a mask? Said, they say in, in our pocket. So and I ask them to please take out a mask and put it your, yourself. So that's very important that uh, we have to ensure that uh, people comply. So then we have to make people determined in terms of change into the behavior. And at the same time, we have to ensure that they behave in terms of actions, the actions have to be stabilized, and we have to help the implementation of uh, change at the same time. But at the same time, there relapse may occur if people don't comply. So we have to ensure that we maintain uh, our support to the people and then they start their actions and maintain their actions uh, in terms of following uh, the prevention aspects. And then we have to have sh ensure that the symptoms uh, are there and the people keep wearing masks and test the appropriate me measures. And we have to see that uh, people become a real model in terms of uh, the behavior change. So we have to ensure that there's a behavior change which takes place. Uh, in terms of society, again, uh, people are fearful in terms of uh, COVID. So we have to see that we face everything and revolutionize ourselves, accept the situation, uh, ensure the communications reach to us properly uh, through the society. We have to empathize with the people, collaborate with each other and, and ensure that we satisfy each other. Then uh, organizations have to play their own role um, in terms of the uh, support. And uh, we have to verify all the information that we receive. Uh, uh, sometimes we forward information uh, without verifying and that's quite the issue in terms of uh, we are sending wrong information uh, to the people. Um, I defined resources to support system. It's our role uh, as, as a society to support each other, uh, the government and the setup that we have to uh, take place in terms of supporting each other. And then the uh, disinfection campaigns can also be run by the society. So that's the role of the society in terms of dealing with COVID. Uh, when we deal with the state, again, uh, there's fear at every level, but then uh, face everything and rise uh, is our motto of our government at the moment. And uh, we are rising, we have faced COVID. Um, we need to have appropriate policy decisions. Uh, the confident leadership is very important for us. Uh, we have to ensure that the economy sustains engaging with the people, education and uh, enforcement uh, of the uh, SOPs is there. And then we have to ensure that there's a coordination, control, uh, change behavior through communication uh, takes place. And then uh, we have to be open and uh, ensure that the vaccine is procured, uh, developmental uh, areas are identified, information management is there, and then the devolution process uh, at the district level, local body is strengthening at the grassroots level are strengthened to ensure the decision making is at the grassroots levels. As far as the systems is concerned, um, again, the fear is there, but uh, we have to focus on everything and regulate the system. It's very important. Uh, we take appropriate resources uh, uh, in terms of managing the system. Uh, community management and community engagement is very important uh, in system establishment, uh, empowerment of the community to make sure the decisions are there at the grassroots level again, uh, control the disease uh, as per system is concerned. Then the operational management uh, should be there as far as the uh, systems. And then uh, ventilators have to be ensured for people through the system uh, where the complications do occur and the ventilator required. This was uh, uh, quite an issue in terms of when we started the uh, COVID management. So that was an issue. Now we are in a developmental phase. Uh, we are developing uh, manufacturing ventilators in Pakistan. That's a good development. And then um, institutions level, we have to ensure the isolation centers and quarantine facilities are available for the general population. And then uh, last but least and the most important, we have to detect, test, isolate, treat every case, 
and trace every contact. Contact tracing is very important and uh, uh, this was very much uh, good ach achieved in terms of uh, the contact uh, tracing, especially in, I will quote example of uh, Vietnam, where uh, they uh, trace the contract at the third uh, contact level. And then that's, that was the reason that uh, we don't see any deaths uh, occurring in terms of uh, the disease. Uh, this important uh, example in terms of uh, Vietnam. In, uh, in terms of uh, vaccine, there's a fear of vaccination. Availability is an issue. There are concerns. There's efficacy and safety issue. Uh, there's a conspiracy issue, there's observations, uh, vaccine selection is uh, important, injection safety insurement is important, and disposal of waste is uh, very important in terms of uh, the uh, waste. Uh, currently, the vaccines which are available are uh, AstraZeneca, Moderna, Pfizer, and uh, the Sputnik and the uh, efficacy of Moderna and uh, Pfizer are 95% quite higher. But there are issues uh, in terms of uh, the storage of the vaccine, especially with the Pfizer. So there are a lot of issues that we have to deal with in terms of uh, while we're dealing uh, with the selection of the vaccine. So um, definitely the fear of vaccination is there. So we have to face everything and read about all the information that we can get. Uh, the availability is, uh, mRNA based are Moderna, Pfizer, and adenovirus based are Astra and Sputnik. Uh, then the concerns uh, for the vaccine, will the vaccine prevent us from getting COVID? Will the vaccine prevent transmission of COVID? After vaccination, do we still need to follow SOPs? How long the immunity will last? What are the risks in receiving vaccine? Will mRNA based vaccines bring any genetic mutations? Then the efficacy and safety uh, of the vaccines. Then some conspiracies issues are there. The reality of COVID, the myths that are floating around. So that's also there as an issue. And some observations, there are past vaccine failures uh, dealing with such types of uh, ages. So that's another issue. And unknown future uh, of the vaccine, it has not been tested for a long time. So unknown future is there. Uh, then there's a push for a quick uh, solution for the vaccine. Uh, not long period of uh, trials are subjects. Uh, the JJ trial was stopped. Uh, JJ's Johnson & Johnson trial. Then there's an option, Operation Warp Speed uh, by USA, which is about 11 billion investment uh, by uh, USA government. And it's a combined effort with the Chief Operating Officer as a general and then the vaccine selection, is it in our hands? Will we be forced for it? Uh, injection safety is issue, misuse of few syringes. We have seen this a lot of hap happening earlier in case of HIV AIDS. And then disposal of waste, there are no comprehensive mechanisms available in terms of uh, dealing with medical waste. So just to summarize, uh, we have to live away with fear, face everything and rise, LA anxiety, take appropriate measures, uh, control what is within, empathize with each other, uh, ensure communications are there uh, and the right communications received, be optimistic, value today, ensure vaccine research and development takes place in Pakistan, uh, information has to be screened and disinfection and develop immunity in terms of uh, dealing with COVID. So uh, definitely everybody is looking for the vaccines, but at the same time, we have to value our health and the vaccine at the same time while dealing with this pandemic. And I'll end with the quote from our uh, prime minister, when we emerge from this challenge, we will be a totally different nation. Those who take such times as a test and face it head on as a challenge, come out stronger. So I'm sure uh, Pakistan will come out stronger in this case. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir, for this very informative talk uh, about forest system phase COVID. And I hope we will learn about this part. Logo ne is is baare mein ki bahut hi zada ek ek informative session jo hai hasil kiya hoga. And thank and 
thank you so much again uh, now we have our second speaker professor dr rafiq khanani who is mbbs fcpet and uh, phd professor of uh, professor of pathology lmcd molecular pathologist and director hajmani's laboratory um, sir now is your turn, turn. you can share your slide with us assalamu alaikum alaikum assalam good morning and good night <laughs> wherever you are uh, it's a great pleasure for me to be part of uh, this webinar and uh, <clears throat> i am sincerely very thankful to professor omar bajasra for joining us uh, the information that we are talking today is uh, definitely correct at this time but uh, since the pandemic and the covid infection is evolving at such a rapid rate that some of the things that we are talking today may not be true for tomorrow uh, for covid prevention we all know that the covid is a non going <coughs> pandemic and it will it has already <coughs> infected millions of people and more than 1.5 million deaths have occurred across the globe universal vaccination that the, everybody who is eligible to get the vaccine should get the vaccine if we have to control this pandemic at this stage of time the word that i am using over here is that we have missed a great, great opportunity earlier when covid started in one china that was the time that the globe should have responded by taking the precautions and preventing the spread of the virus but we have lost that opportunity for certain reasons and uh, now we are in in the middle of a pandemic which in in the history in, in my lifetime uh, i haven't seen such a damaging virus which is creating havoc across the globe so now it's crucial that the covid vaccine which is available is safe and effective and delivered to everyone who is in need of it in fact everybody is in need of it so those with the role of delivering the covid 9 vaccine program need to be knowledgeable and competent so that they can gain the confidence of the communities the covid virus is a disease that is caused by an infection with sars cov 2 which is a corona virus pandemic <clears throat> and sars cov2 stands for severe acute respiratory syndrome and cov is an acronym for the corona virus disease and the word 19 which we used is because it was first time declared in 2019 now corona viruses are known to cause diseases in animals and in humans as well now so that's why it's classified as one of the zoonoses and uh, we have seen the sars cov1 and now this is sars cov2 and earlier we have seen the middle east respiratory virus mers all these two viruses could not spread globally widely because of the severity of the illness that it caused and the response of the countries in which these viruses were first identified somehow globe has failed to contain the sars sars cov2 virus at its earlier stages now all of you know that the viruses are much smaller than the bacteria somehow the cartoon that has been depicted and propagated many people misunderstand that this is something that's very big and that we can see but unfortunately these are so small that the, we cannot even see with the ordinary microscopes and uh, there are certain diseases which have been controlled by the vaccination polio is an example uh, which is about to be eradicated except for a couple of countries like pakistan and afghanistan the diseases which are preventable 
by vaccination includes measles, mumps, rubella, influenza, hepatitis A, hepatitis B. Influenza viruses are RNA viruses and there is a challenge that they are constantly mutating. So it is difficult to make the vaccines which remain effective for a longer period of time. And that's why most of the time we have to change the vaccine every year. SARS-CoV-2 is also an RNA virus and we don't know that the vaccines which are being produced these days, how long their efficacy will last. So there is a mesmerizing effect of this coronavirus structure because of uh, this, it has created lots of illusion that that's something which can be controlled and prevented by seeing it. Unfortunately, it's not like this. The virus has got uh, a spike protein, which is required for the virus to attach to human receptor cells. And these receptor cells are present in the mucosa of uh, our uh, nasal cavity, nasopharynx, oropharynx, and our eyes. And if virus gets enter entry into these places, it finds the receptor, it enters into the cell and it starts multiplying. And it may produce a disease or it may cause an infection. The difference between infection and disease is that every infection cannot culminate into a disease. And that's why this is one of the reasons that many people who are infected with these coronaviruses, they do not feel sickness or ill, or the illness or sickness is delayed, and those people who are infected keep spreading the virus into the community. So for virus to be transmitted from one individual to another or one place to another, there are certain requirements. There should be a portal of exit, and then there should be mode of transmission. In case of coronavirus, this is coughing, sneezing, or even speaking loudly, or even at the normal speed. And sometimes even when you are breathing normally, if the viral load is high, the people keep transmitting the virus outside their body. Then there is a requirement of a portal of entry, which is most of the time mucosal surface, which are having the receptors which receive these viruses and the virus can enter the host cell. COVID-19 spreads primarily from person to person through droplets that are emitted from nose and mouth. And if the person coughs, sneezes, speaks, or even during breathing, and these <clears throat> droplets and viruses can survive on the surfaces for a certain period of time. But nowadays we realize that uh, the transmission through contact or surfaces is much less common compared to the airborne transmission. Now this is a typical example of the cycle through which these viral infections keep perpetuating in a society that there should be an infectious agent, which in this case is SARS-CoV-2, then there should be a reserve or reservoir. These reservoirs may be humans or any other animals. In case of COVID, it is mainly the human reservoir which is responsible for spreading of the disease in human population. And the portal of the exit from one individual who is infected include mouth or nose through coughing, sneezing, or even talking. Then the mode of transmission is generally airborne or direct contact with the virus on a contaminated surface. From this, the virus may enter into through a portal of entry, which is a mucous membrane of the nose and mouth and sometimes eyes. And the person in which this virus is going should be susceptible, should be able to accept and receive this virus and allow it to multiply. This is the vaccination by which we can decrease the susceptibility of the host and increase the res resistance of the host so that the virus cycle cannot continue and new infected person is not infected and it's unable to transmit the virus. So the role of vaccination is over here. 
and uh, Professor Romar Bagasra will be enlightening us on how these vaccines are produced and how are they going to improve the situation which the globe is facing today. The vaccinations generally work by the antigens which are introduced into the host so that the immune system is trained to respond to these viral infections. And once the person's immune system is trained, the new antigens, when they enter to the body, these antigens are responded by the host cell's immune system so that they are, do not allow the virus to be established into the host and cause disease. And that's how this cycle of propagation can be stopped. I'm thankful to Professor Omar Bagasra for taking out the time almost in the middle of the night for this program. And Dr. Sadar Patmar, Dr. Minhaj Kirwai, Ashmani's Labs, and all the participants. And public health program of England, some of the slides have been taken from there. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir, for this very informative talk. Today, we have a lot of questions in our COVID vaccine. How do we use the COVID vaccine? How do we use it? 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 So, today, we have a informative talk. टॉप के जरिए लोगों को ये चीज की जो इनफॉरमेशन हासिल हुई है कि ये जो हमें किस तरीके से हमें कोई इस कोविड नाइन कोविड वैक्सीन के की जो वो है कि इसका रोल क्या है इसको हमें जो है आज वो लोगों ने समझा नाउ वी हैव अवर थर्ड स्पीकर डॉक्टर उमर बकाजरा ही इज एमडी पीएचडी प्रोफेसर ऑफ ऑफ बायो but मैं इनको सबसे पहले इस सर को इनवाइट करने से पहले मैं सर का बहुत बहुत शुक्रिया अदा करना चाहती हूँ कि आज सर ने हमारी ये जो है इतनी ज़्यादा जो है सर उसपे रिक्वेस्ट पे कि कि अब वो हमें इस सेशन में ज्वाइन करें और अभी वहाँ पर साउथ कैरोलिना में जो है 12 एम का टाइम हुआ है तो इतने सर ने हमें जो है � कि लोगों को हम जो है कोविड वैक्सीन के हवाले से इनफॉरमेशन दें ताकि लोगों के ज़हन से मैं जो मुख्तलिफ इबाम हैं जो लोगों के ज़हन में मुख्तलिफ मुख्तलिफ इकसाम की कंफ्यूजन है उसको हम जो है एक अच्छे तरीके से एक जैसे जो है दूर कर सकें तो बहुत बहुत शुक्रिया डॉक्टर उमर बकाजरा साहब के आज के आज आपने हमें ज्वाइन किया और लोगों को जो है हम इस जो है मज़ीद हम बेहतर इनफॉरमेशन दे सकेंगे so sir, please uh, let's share your screen with us. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you very much for inviting me. I'm very, very honored, greatly honored to be part of this program and part of this uh, beautiful conversation we having about COVID and about vaccination. So my goal will be to, I hope you see my screen now. Am I, am I correct? You see me, right? You can see my screen, right? All of you can see my screen? Yes, sir, we can see your screen. I just want to make sure that we are on the same page. <laughs> yes, we are on the same, same page. So my goal will be to uh, assist you in uh, figuring out what this all vaccine is about and why we want to use vaccine and what is the role of vaccine in, in, uh, in COVID, what are we doing with this whole nine yards? So my goal will be to share with you how we doing all this thing, why we doing this. So vaccination is not new, by the way. Vaccination is very, very, very old. And I can tell you with great deal of uh, honor that Muslim people are the one who actually started the vaccination. Most of the time when you read literature, you will see Edward Jenner who started the vaccine. The word vaccine actually come from vaccinia virus, which was against the smallpox. But during the Ottoman Empire for centuries, they were doing vaccination against vaccinia virus 
by using a dry powder of patchul. When somebody has uh, smallpox, they develop this horrible patchul. They would dry them, they would make powder under the sun, and they will make a minor scratch and they will give this, uh, put that on, or it's called virulation. I'm gonna to talk to you in a second about this. It's called virulation. So virulation was, is very common. So was very common and do all through the Muslim world and many other part of the country, other part of the world at that time, at the time of Ottoman and Usmani class. So vaccine we use all the time. As you know, we use 16 or 17 vaccine for childhood. Before the baby is 24 months old, we have given them 17 different kinds of vaccination. What vaccine does, vaccine is a very clever technique. It's actually fool the immune system. that somebody actually infected with a virus or bacteria or disease causing pathogen, a pathogenic agent. This could be virus, could be fungus, or could be bacteria, or could be mycobacterium. So what we do, we take a small part of that agent, pathogenic agent, and we inject them. And this is not the whole virus, it's not the whole nine yard. It does not, stum does not infect the person. So bacteria, fungus, uh, virus, and other pathogenic agent, we just take a little piece of out of it. It's almost look like, a, if you think of a, this cell phone, you take the just cover of the cell phone, just like this white cover. And that's what we do. We actually take a part of it, we call them antigen. So that part, this cover in scientific word, for example, would be called antigen. And then we inject them, it does not cause any disease. But your immune system believe that you have actually have pathogenic agent and your body make antibody to it. You respond to it by making a, a defensive mechanism. A, we call them antibodies. Those antibodies will actually protect the person when that person is really infected with a real pathogenic agent. So here comes the vaccine. This is what we do with vaccine part. My slide is not moving. Here we go. So as I mentioned to you, a long time ago, the vaccination started by Ottoman Empire many, many centuries before British people even, or the European people knew that there is such thing as virulation. So what happened in 1715, Mary Wortley Montugo, she went to, she was a wife of a British, English, English ambassador to Turkey, which is the Ottoman Empire. And she watched how people are immunized against smallpox. Smallpox was, is extremely deadly. Horrible, horrible disease and disfigures your face. Smallpox is extinct now. It's, it's basically controlled, completely control, under control. And we don't get a smallpox anymore. So when she came, uh, 1715, she came and she watched. And then when she returned in 1718, she basically told people and she propagated how to vaccinate people against smallpox. There was no cure for smallpox. And that way, Edward Jenner himself was virulated. So Edward Jenner was supposed to be a father of vaccination. The word vaccination come from his vaccinia virus immunity. Actually, he was actually vaccinated with that technique which Muslim people have invented centuries ago. So you will notice that smallpox wasn't very common in Muslim world during the Ottoman Empire. And Ottoman Empire lasted for 700 years. So you can see we don't realize that we have been you know, learning about Western world, but we don't realize that many of the invention which is we claim to be by European, they are not European, they're actually Muslim, Muslim uh, invention. To make the story short, now this is the what we're talking about, the cell phone. This is the virus. This is my whole cell phone. What we do, we take the, we take the white part out of it. This is the spike protein. This is the glycoprotein. We take it out and we put in another virus 
or another agent which does not replicate most of the time. They are not, this is not the real virus. Actually, we inject, we genetically engineer this thing and it's only, only make this, this glycoprotein most of the time. I'm going to come to it in a second that there are many variations of this technique. So the most common technique is being used now is we use this glycoprotein and, and we gen genetically engineer another agent, which is not pathogenic, does not cause disease, is only make this protein and the body when we inject them, to human, our body think we are infected with the coronavirus, COVID-19. COVID and it will make antibodies to it. So when somebody is really infected with the virus, they, they will immediately stop this infection within, within days because they already contain lots of antibody against that particular, particular glycoprotein. Now, the two way of doing this, there are more than one way to skin a cat. So one way to do it to only express this, this in a specific way, that's what the different Pfizer and Moderna and various other vaccines are being Sputnik, they're using this. There's other way to do it. If suppose somebody got really infected with the whole virus. As Dr. Karani mentioned, your body will suffer. Person will be infected and small percent of the people, but 2% of the people would get really, really sick and die. Other small percent of the people will get sick and be in a hospital, they'll be released. The re reason is that this is very pathogenic virus, terrible virus, all right? So what we do with the other way of making vaccine, I'm gonna go to this. This is actually a life cycle of how coronavirus infects. It has, a, it is a coronavirus. It will bind a specific receptor it will enter through your breath, generally through your breath. You take in the breath, it's in the air, you touch it, you touch your nose, you will get into your body. It will go and home into two places. Right away, within, within hours, it will attach to your lung cells, a special receptor, we call them SCX2 receptor, and it will also bind your olfactory neuron. This is the part in the brain we have. It's a little ball, little round ball, which is right behind. If I see, if you see my finger, right behind this, there's an olfactory bulb. This is the way you smell things. Within an hour, it will be, you can smell nothing. You smell this, you have no smell. You have sense of smell is gone. Now, many people will just have that. They won't be able to smell nothing. 90, 85 to 98% of the people lose the sense of smell within hour after exposure. Then it will move into your lung and if you are lucky, you will be okay. You will just have a cough, a little bit of fever and you'll be fine. But in many people, a large percent of the people, person going to have an infection of the lung and your smell would not recover till your lungs are clear or you die, whichever come first. All right, so that is the mechanism of this COVID infection. And what we do, we actually fool the immune system. We, we make this, make sure that uh, our immune system. So there, here we go. So here is you have a go, gone through your nose and it got into olfactory neuron. You can smell nothing and your lung will be infected. Within short time, your lung will be gone. It will eat up your lung. It will basically digest. Your lung will liquefy part of your lung and you will not be able to survive. But not everybody has that problem, but a good percent of the people will have this issue. Now, let's go and talk about what we talk, what we talk about next. So what we're doing by vaccination, vaccination is not dangerous. So COVID vaccine, vaccine should be safe. All the COVID vaccine should be safe. Whatever the technique they use, they all should be safe because it had been tested in 50 to 100,000 people. Some of the vaccine, which is Chinese, Chinese vaccine has been tested in millions of people. 
So vaccine is not new. Who should not take this vaccine? Okay, everybody, everybody should that take this vaccine. We have not heard if children can take vaccine or not because children have to have a smaller amount than, than, uh, than the adult will. And this is being done as we speak, the trial is going on. Pregnant women should not take the vaccine because this is the RNA virus. Even it is RNA based vaccine. It's RNA virus, but virus vaccines are also, some of the vaccines are based on RNA virus. They have not tested pregnant women. So, Pregnant women should not take the vaccine. Anybody, any woman who is getting, want to get pregnant. She is, uh, she's trying to get pregnant. They should not take this vaccine because we don't know what can happen. Till the clinical trials are done, clinical trials are going on as we speak. Now, this is nothing new. We do not give pre pre pregnant vaccine, HPV vaccine. We do not give them MMR, mum, measles, or rubella vaccine. We do not give them influenza, live influenza vaccine. We give them dead influenza vaccine in their nose, dead virus, okay? So we just spray in the nose, dead virus. We do not give them live influenza virus because influenza virus can cross the placenta and can hurt the, can hurt the baby. We do not know if they're gonna hurt the baby or not, but still we have to be careful. I wanna go back because I wanna show you this thing. And that is the, and some people who are traveling, we do not give them pregnant women traveling vaccine like yellow fever, typhoid, typhoid fever. So not giving COVID vaccine is totally logical at this moment. All right, at the moment we don't know. So now let's talk about Pakistan. We had talked about the world, we talk about the universe. What is good for Pakistan? What vaccine should we take? Now remember, I showed you a picture that we're showing. We are getting, we are they're making vaccine against the spike protein, spike glycoprotein. But they are not the only protein in there in the virus. There are many other protein. If somebody get infected, they would make antibody against multiple different kinds of protein, which can stop the virus. Okay, which is stop the replication of virus as soon as your antibodies are made. So what is the ideal vaccine for Pakistan? Safety. The doctor, Dr. Kadwai mentioned and Dr. Rafiq Khanani mentioned, safety is the most paramount, most paramount. Most important is a vaccine. How stable the vaccine is. We do not have refrigeration in every part of Pakistan, especially minus 80 degree refrigeration is rare in Pakistan. So quite, quite obviously Pfizer vaccine would not work because we don't have facilities to store the vaccine at minus 80 degrees. This is minus 80 degrees. This is a very cold, cold, cold. So we need vaccine which survive four degree refrigeration for 30 to 60 days. And I'm gonna talk about it in a second. We need to have a single dose vaccine. Pfizer vaccine, Moderna vaccine, Sputnik, two-dose vaccine. Why is that? It's a very long story, but what happened in this case of virus, the scientists think that when you infected first time, you develop lots of IgM, which I won't go into either, and then when you do second dose, you get lots of IgG, which lasts for a long time. This is still experimental. For Pakistan, if you give a dose, one dose to a person, is only 50% protective. Moderna, Sputnik, and Pfizer vaccines are 50 to 60% at the most protective for single dose. We cannot trace people who've taken vaccine in Pakistan to do another dose. And how effective, how costly it is. Dr. Kadwai mentioned how costly they are. You need a vaccine which you cost only, only one rupee. One rupee costs not more than that. Because our people cannot afford $40, $50, $60 for a single dose of vaccine. Remember, Pfizer and Moderna are subsidized by the US government. They spend $11 billion each for each vaccine, all right? 
So this is not something we can do. Now I'm gonna talk about one more thing. It's called broad and long immunity. So I just mentioned to you, two doses are short, short immunity. Immunity lasts very short time. And this is the reason you have to do another dose after 21 days. Can we get that many 140 million people to come back? Or 100 million people to come back and take another dose? Unlikely. So vaccine has to have broad effect and long lasting effect. Now, so what we know, when somebody is infected with real COVID virus, they have immunity for five months. Even they didn't get any symptom. They have they survived, they didn't even know they were infected. Their immunity lasts for five months. Why is that? Because this is the whole virus. The whole virus vaccine seems like is the more logical thing to do. And this is the way cost effectiveness. We have easy, easy administration, the nasal or shot. It's fine. Uh, Dr. Kadwai mentioned about, about changing needle. We know about HIV because I, I did this whole nine yard about HIV. People will keep reusing the same needle. So a, a vaccine which hopefully will develop soon, oral vaccine or nasal vaccine, like we have polio vaccine, like we have flu vaccine, a nasal spray will be more, more suitable for Pakistan but any developing countries in Africa, in, in part of Asia, heat is stable. You cannot, we cannot have minus 90 degree, minus 80 degree uh, refrigerator vaccine. It would be very difficult to do. And it has to be multivalent, which means it has more than one places when it can infect. I'm gonna go back. So we need a multivalent vaccine, in my opinion. Why, where are we gonna get that? Uh, so Dr. Dr. Bagasa said multivalent vaccine and should have a long lasting immunity. So let's talk about this right now. So here you have Pfizer vaccine, which is approved, was made by in the collaboration with multiple, you know, multiple countries. It is being, being used right now in US and UK. It's an RNA based vaccine. And I wanna talk about in the one, in the next slide, I'm gonna talk about RNA and DNA based vaccine an inactivated vaccine. Now you have a whole virus vaccine. This means you inactivate the virus. Basically you grow the virus and you fix with formalin and radioactivity. This virus cannot multiply. This is done. So formalin fix, radiation fix is same thing we take for polio. SARS vaccine, seven, seven vaccine we take, we give it to our children. They are many of those vaccines are not the one in the mouth, the one we give an injection, they are formally fixed, whole virus vaccine. And they are cheaper to make. How cheap? Really, really cheap. One rupees and less to make it and deliver it. There's another in, 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 in inactivated virus vaccine. This is non-replicating vector virus vaccine. This one, this also required two doses, but it has a DNA vector. I'm gonna talk in a minute what DNA and RNA vector mean. And there's another in any inactivated viral vaccine that can be made in Pakistan. It could be made anywhere. That's very easy to make. If Chinese are giving it for free, we should take that because that is cheap vaccine and it's so easy to make. And it's more, it's a multivalent. It's like a getting an, a viral infection, like I just mentioned to you, and you have no symptom, and it's good for five months, six months, maybe a year, because so far they have done five months, in five months it is still there. So we have to think in Pakistan in a smart way. However, if this vaccine is available, this vac other vaccines are available for free, you know, why not? But this vaccine, which I'm talking about, whole inactivated virus is been around, it's been given all this part of the world, this blue, all these places they are being given now as they speak, as I'm speaking to you, millions and millions of people are taking this vaccine, by the way, including Pakistan. Part of the Pakistan is part of, Pakistan is part of the clinical trial for this, this whole virus inactivated vaccine. 
All right, now. So now what we say there is a natural immunity, a pre-existing immunity against COVID virus. It is more common in poor nation, including Pakistan. Dr. Kanani has been working on it, as you probably heard his talks. What happened is this, coronavirus, COVID-19 is new. You know, we'll discover that in October last year, 2019. But coronavirus, human coronavirus are not new. Actually, coronavirus infect almost every living thing there is. By the way, coronavirus is a very common virus. We all are infected with these viruses. These are corona, human coronavirus, and they are very, very, very common. Now some countries will have a lot more and they provide some immunity. We still have to take vaccine, okay? But what they do, they provide some immunity. And as you notice that in, in the Western world, they are very common in children. And we have not done comprehensive study in Pakistan or other developing nation. This is, I bet this is very common in most of the developing nation, especially in Muslim nation. Why would I say that? The, the reason they are most common in young children in Europe because the kids are gathered together, young kids, and they are in a small classroom because they're little. So they're a small classroom, you have 30, 40, 50 kids. If one got little, little minor, they cause very, very, very mild cough or a cold, don't even a cough, cold. And everybody would get it. And young people show immune, some degree of immunity against it. So you notice the young people do not get very much COVID infection in the United States too. The adolescent and young people are partially immune because of this. And I have several papers uh, I can send you if you, anybody wants to. So it causes very mild symptoms, but it cannot replace the vaccine. So I'm emphasizing that everybody should get the vaccine, the vaccine is safe, and everybody should be, we should take all the vaccine. But in Pakistan, in many parts of Africa, especially the Muslim country, there is a partial immunity against that. And some people say that where they, wherever there is a malaria and BCG, BCG infection, when we give BCG vaccine, the incidence of COVID are less, they have less mortality. So mortality is lower because somehow it, it gives a partial immunity to the person. Now, let's talk about DNA and RNA based vaccine. RNA is extremely unstable in room temperature because we have RNA virus, RNA enzyme, RNA enzyme in everywhere in our body. All parts of our body, everything liquid in our body, including our sweat, our eyes, our mouth, all part of our body, which is liquid, has RNAs. It would digest the RNA vaccine. So it's the reason they had to keep it minus 80 degree, minus 90 degree, because this is a very unstable molecule they're using as a vehicle to make the vaccine. DNA is very, very stable. And DNA vaccine, I don't know if you noticed, but DNA vaccines are being, being used. You can see this is a DNA viral vaccine, Sputnik V, and many of the other, other this is RNA, vaccine, RNA, Pfizer using RNA, and this is the one of the reason they have to use very low temperature. And they are only against the spike. This is also against the spike protein. These are whole, whole viruses or part of the protein, which are multiple protein, which gives you multivalent vaccination. All right, I think I stop here. I think I'm way, way over what my time was. Okay, now I am, I'm sure all of you thinking, oh God, I have lots of questions to ask. So ask away. I hope I clarified myself about a lot of things, but I've already raised a lot of questions in your mind. Thank you so much, sir. For this very, very, very much informative. I'm going to stop sharing my, my talk. 
let me let me do that real quick stop sharing stop uh, sharing Stop sharing. Sir, you can stop sharing screen. So I think I stop, stop sharing. Here we go. I'm stop sharing myself. Yes, sir. Exactly. You have, you have done. Sir, it was a very wonderful and uh, informative session. I hope that you have listened to us today. You have a lot of information about the three speakers. You have a lot of information about COVID-19 and its vaccination ke role. Ke se. Ke, uh, kis tarike se jo hai COVID ko sam, hai, hai, aur uski vaccination ke se, kis tarike se isko understand karna hai. Now we will move move our question and answer sessions. So log, kuch logo ke jo hai, paas questions aaye hain, to usko main aap logo ke saath share kar leti hoon. first my main question jo hai, Dr. Umar Bagasra sahab se hai ke, how are these vaccines made and what technology do they use? This was our first question from our listeners. Very, very good question. Vaccines are nowadays are extremely easy to make. We use a vector. So vector is basically, I want to give you an example of it. Vector are actually viruses which are non-pathogenic viruses. It could be DNA virus, could be RNA virus. They are circular. This is circular. And what we do, we keep the virus. So this virus are non-pathogenic. They don't cause any disease. But what we do here, we put the spike protein. So we hook up a spike protein. This virus, when it replicates, it's going to produce the spike protein only, not anything else. And your body will respond to it, thinking he is attacked by a dangerous virus. It would make antibody to it, but person would not get sick. Now, some people would have some minor fever, small fever sometimes, because of it's making lots of protein. Lots of immune system is attacking this and making a lot of protein. There are three different ways to make vaccine. One I mentioned to you is a very ancient, almost 100 year old technique, very simple to make. You basically grow the virus. You grow the virus in a big fermenter. You use the cell line, which virus is growing. So we use lung cell line or whatever cell line. There are many cell lines. You figure out which cell line make the most virus. It's very easy to know. And you grow the virus in a laboratory, special laboratory, P3 laboratory, highly secure. You have to wear a gown and all weird stuff on you, like you're in a space. And then you grow the virus, take the virus out by centrifugation and put formalin in it. Once you put formalin, this virus is dead. You basically give the small amount of that virus as an injection. Your body thing has been attacked by a real virus and will make antibody against multiple protein. So this will be multivalent valent vaccine. And I think it lasts much more long, much longer than the genetically engineered virus. So genetically engineered virus will be RNA or DNA, or you can use the whole, whole, uh, whole virus. And the third way is to actually get the peptide. You are genetically engineered virus. You don't give it to anybody. You give it to cells in a liquid, in a big fermenter. Cell will make antibody, will make protein. You basically get the protein and inject the protein into person will be just this, just this. This is the spike protein and body will make antibody against that protein. So there are three different ways, and we, we use all three methods for various vaccination. So in reality, anybody, essentially any laboratory which has BSL level three facilities can make vaccine, including Pakistan. Pakistan, we have six different places where they are highly, highly, highly sophisticated level three laboratories. And we can make in Pakistan. It's very easy to make. There's no really big, 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 huge secret to it. I hope I answered the question. Thank you so much, sir, for your, for your answer. And I hope that what technology do they use for making this vaccine? 
And now our second question for uh, doctor, for Professor Doctor Rafiq Khanani. The question is this: How long does does production lasts after take taking the vaccine? How long? What lasts? Uh, uh, immunity. Yes, sir. So the, it, immunity lasts according to what kind of vaccine they made. If it's only against the spike protein, it's only against the only making glycoprotein per spike. Glycoprotein spike is has two end to it. So I'm going to give you this end and this end. This one binds the this this protein binds the actually responsible for binding to the ACH receptor or specific receptor in your body. So this is my lung cell, it will bind this. And this protein will allow this virus to enter by using fusion. So this is the way it will enter this virus. How long it lasts? This is actually a secret. We don't know. We do not know any of the RNA virus or DNA virus vector how long the immunity lasts. Only thing I can tell you, the whole virus is like actually somebody got viral infection. And we know the person had no symptom, but those people immunity at least lasts for five months. I think it, I think it lasts for whole life. Now there's a one other reason I want to mention the why we, I think we should use the whole virus vaccine because, because we do know if this virus is going to mutate. So if you have immunity against multiple different protein, if it's mutated, you're still protected. But if you only against one and that spike protein mutated, you have no immunity. Thank you, you sir. See my point? What you guys is your point? Dr. Rafi Khanani, what is your opinion about this question? Uh, in fact, uh, I would like to ask a supplementary question from uh, Bagasra. Uh, Dr. Bagasra, regarding the oral vaccines for COVID-19, are there any vaccines uh, in pipeline that can be taken orally for pro pre prevention of covid 19? No, no, the reason is this, that we take live polio vaccine for, for polio virus, because polio virus actually infects your GI tract, actually binds your part of your intestinal part of your epithelial cell, they have receptor. But we do not have, human do not have any receptor in our respiratory part of our body against the COVID. We don't have SES2 receptor. So it's very unlikely that we can do, that we can make an oral vaccine, but we can make nasal vaccine. We can okay. bind all through here, all the way through here, all the way through your lung. So That's nasal right. will be more logical thing to develop eventually, not right now. Right now, all these industries are doing most of our making money. They're making billions of dollars out of this because this is the money making opportunity for those people. But our, our nation, I think our nation, developing nation joined hand together. Pakistan has one of the most outstanding facilities in the world. If anybody seen HEJ, anybody seen other facilities in Pakistan, we have unbelievable facilities. I've been there, so I know. So we can do that and we can join hand with many other nations developing nation to develop alternate way, easier way, cheaper way to make vaccine. It's easy to do. How difficult it is to just spray in the nose. I mean, how difficult, it's not difficult and you can genetically engineer virus, you can generally in a totally non-pathogenic system, you can inject it. Easy to I think that's, that's an excellent opportunity uh, that uh, Dr. Omar is mentioning and uh, maybe you should take forward following this discussion and then uh, how we can plan for especially the nasal option that you are suggesting this is very important for us to take it forward and uh, the number two thing that you mentioned about a single dose vaccine because definitely follow-up will be very important compliance will be an issue in terms of two doses vaccine so single dose vaccine should be uh, an alternative 
Yeah. It will be very difficult for if in our nation, you know, any developing nation to bring the person twice for, for the same shot. Very difficult to do. And we have seen this in case of the hepatitis B vaccinations. That's the issue that we are facing. The hepatitis is already there. And then the yeah. disposal of syringes, as I mentioned earlier, has been a very important issue in terms of its reusage. In fact, uh, uh, we confiscated about 50,000 syringes at one spot that were going to be resaled uh, in terms of the syringes use. And then the uh, injection users, the, the addicts that we have, so they will find syringes. So there's a lot of issues in terms of when we are dealing with the, the injection-based uh, uh, procedures. Yeah. So there are a lot of issues. I think, you know, Pakistan, you, you folks are in a very high level with grace of God. You guys should really get you guys together with our other scientists. And it should be very difficult for us to Pakistan to lead that project. It's not difficult to do, by the way. It's very simple, simple science. It's not complicated science. Thank you so much, Dr. Rafiq Hanani, Dr. Umar Bakasra. But uh, we have one, one very interesting question. Question is, would someone is still be able to transmit coronavirus even after he has been immunized? And I would like to request Dr. Kidwai, please answer this question. Well, definitely uh, virus transmission is there, but um, as uh, said earlier that uh, the vaccination lasts only for five months, not more than that. So transmission uh, definitely uh, may be there. Dr. Omar, what is your opinion on that? Well, it depends it depend what person is. Remember our immune system is different from each other. So all the vaccine, not this one only, they are not 100% effective. So some people will probably have get vaccinated and still get infected. Very few, but still possibility is there. Similarly, if somebody has been infected before, has been infected or vaccinated, and his or her immunity may wither away faster than the other person. Also, people like us who are older, our immunity is low. We don't have a very high level of immunity at our age. So our immunity response is going to be much lower than as somebody 18 years old. So I think that's going to be a variable factor in, in anywhere in the world with vaccination. The other thing is that that these uh, right. vaccines are focusing more on diseases rather than vaccines. So that's another issue that uh, we have to face that these vaccines are right now focusing on disease, uh, not on infection prevention or infection control aspect. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Dr. Kidwai. Uh, we have one one more questions. How many doses are needed? And doc, Dr. Rafiq Hanani, if you if you if you would like to answer this question, please. I think uh, Professor Omar has already responded that we for these vaccines like Moderna and Pfizer, uh, two doses are required, twenty one days apart. Uh, Oxford vaccine, which is prepared by AstraZeneca, it also requires two doses, 28 days apart. And uh, the Chinese one, uh, which Professor Omar has talked about is, I think, again, uh, two doses, 21 days apart. I would like to ask one question, which is uh, the kind of uh, people uh, propagating through conspiracy theories is that these messenger RNA vaccines, since they are new and they might contain certain codes which uh, can be used as an identifier and certain data to be transmitted through it globally to control your genes. So, <laughs> oh, I already answered that question. mRNA are extremely unstable. The reason we giving them intravenously or intramuscularly, because they do their job very quickly and within days, actually within hours, they disappear, they part, fall apart. RNA is extremely, extremely unstable, okay? So if anybody has any doubt that there is any kind of a message 
you know, being sent to our body, this is not the way to do it. You know, I think we don't have a technology or anybody has technology to actually identify you through any kind of vaccination process or any process, unless somebody put chip in your body. You know, right now, the only way to identify you is to somebody put chip behind your neck, but they already have. They, they don't need vaccine for it. The people who want to identify you, you already do it yourself. Here is your identifier. All the information you're about you is in your cell phone. Whenever you talk to, how you talk to, what you do, they know everything about you through profiling. Yeah, so somebody they, said that COVID has a certification of vaccine ID as yeah. an acronym. <laughs> no, they, they already know how that is done. And I can tell you how it's being done, but that has to be part of another, another lecture. This is not the lecture time to do that. So I got it. I just want to ask you a question to, to the, my listener. How that much data from billions of people can be collected and, and, and deciphered? Because they, you know they know everything about you through this. How? That's another lecture for another time. Thank you so much, and and I would like to thank uh, again to Dr. Umar Bagasra, Professor Dr. Rafiq Khanani, and Dr. Nihaj Shrivai for this very informative and wonderful session. And जो हमारे पास हमारे पास पास आज के listeners थे जो थे जिन्होंने हमें आज इस session में join किया उनका भी बेहद शुक्रिया कि आज हम आज उन्होंने जो इस तमाम चीजों को को जो है देखा होगा उन्होंने इस तमाम चीजों को आज जो है समझा होगा कि जो है वैक्सीन के कोविड 19 में जो है वैक्सीनेशन का क्या रोल है और किस तरीके से जो है हमें इसको अंडरस्टैंड करना है और इस जो हमारे पास इस तरह के जो हक के जो हमारे पास जो है इंफॉर्मेटिव सेशंस होते हैं क्योंकि हाशमानी हमेशा से ही जो है लोगों को एक इंफॉर्मेशन पहुंचाने का जो है एक उसने जो एक चीज एक जिम्मेदारी है कि भाई हमें जो है लोगों को इंफॉर्म करना है कि जो हमारे पास रिसेंट अपडेट्स होती हैं जो रिसेंट बीमारियां होती हैं उसके लिए आपसे हम हम लोगों को एक ऑथेंटिक इनफॉरमेशन पहुंचाएं तो इसमें जो है आप सब लोगों का बेहद शुक्रिया कि आप सब लोगों ने हमें ज्वाइन किया इस सेशन के लिए और फिर हमें अब आंदा आप लोगों के फीडबैक का भी इंतजार रहेगा कि आप लोग हमें फीडबैक भेजें और बताएं कि अब नेक्स्ट क्योंकि य आएंगे और कोविड 19 के हवाले से जहां तक बात है आज आज हमारे तमाम मोस्टली मोस्टली जो हमारे रिस्पेक्टेड पार्टिसिपेंट्स हैं जो हमारे पैनलिस्ट हैं उन्होंने हमें कोविड 19 के हवाले से बताया कि हमें उसकी जो है वैक्सीनेशन के बाद भी उसकी तमाम ट्रीटमेंट के बाद भी हमें एहतियात हमें لازمی طور पर करनी है क्योंकि एहतियात इस सिलसिले में हमें हम जब तक हम एहतियात नहीं करेंगे तब तक हम खुद को भी और अपने घर वालों को भी इससे जो है महफूज नहीं रह सकेंगे so stay safe and stay healthy और जो आपके पास COVID-19 के हवाले से SOPs हैं उन पर मुकम्मल तौर पर अमल दरामत करें मास का लाजमी लाजमी इस्तेमाल करें और अगर आपके family में आपके एडिट में या खुद आपको भी इसके कोई sign and symptoms ऐसे वाजे नजर आ रहे हैं कि आपको नजला खांसी है बुखार है तो फौरी तौर पर अपना जो है COVID का test करवाएं और जो आपके consultant है family doctor है उनसे उनके मशवरों पर लाजमी अमल करें तो इन सब एहतियाती तदाबीर पर अमल करके ही हम खुद को भी और अपने घर वालों को भी जो है कोविड जैसी वबा से महफूज रख सकते हैं तो अब आइंदा सेशन के लिए आप सब लोगों का जो है जो है वो आप सब लोग हम हमारे आइंदा सेशन में भी जो है पार्टिसिपेट कीजिएगा ताकि हम लोग अपने जो हमारा एक ये تعلیمی सफर है कि हम लोगों को एजुकेट कर रहे उसमें हम इसको مزید आगे लेकर जाएंगे so next session for you, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you everybody. Allah Hafiz. Thank you for everybody. I thank everybody for it. Allah bless you. Allah protect you from any kind of illness. Stay home, stay safe. Thank you. Thank you, Allah Hafiz. Thank you for invitation. Thank you, Rafiq. I really appreciate for invitation. Thank you, Marsa and Rafiq Saab also. Allah Hafiz. Allah Hafiz.